Waltham, Massachusetts is a western suburb of Boston, birthplace of the American Revolution. That's why you're hearing the Stars and Stripes forever, but also because this video documents a ride on the national holiday, July 4th, on Lexington Street in Waltham, from Bacon Street to the Lexington Town Line. I'm John Allen. I shot this video with a camera on my helmet facing forward, and another on the rear rack of my bicycle, facing rearward. The inset image is from the rear-facing camera. I'm on Bacon Street, entering Lexington Street. After a short distance, Totten Pond Road will go off to the left. I look to the right to check that traffic is safely waiting at the light. A pickup truck passes and turns left onto Totten Pond Road. The right-hand lane of Lexington Street is too narrow to share safely with motor vehicles, and so I'm riding in its middle. Motorists must pass me in the next lane. Riding near the right-hand curb would invite hazardous close passes. On this morning of the national holiday, July 4th, traffic is very light. Motorists can easily change lanes to pass. Cars which were waiting at the traffic light are passing now. I'm in driver's primary field of view, and because they must make a full lane change to pass, I can check well in advance in my rearview mirror that they will pass safely. And a motorcycle. It's noisy, but I'm getting along fine here. Most of my talk here is voiceover narration, but there are also some comments from during the ride. For example, 12 miles an hour. That's the reading from my digital speedometer. I'll be climbing almost all the way to the Lexington line. With no traffic behind me, I can momentarily abandon lane control and merge right around some rough pavement. Another car passes. This driver is keeping a more moderate speed than most of the others. Still climbing. I look into a side street to check for possible entering traffic. I'll take advantage of this stretch to point out what it shows. Because traffic is very light today, my slow speed isn't causing significant delay to anyone. Motorists can pass me just as they would pass any slow vehicle, for example, one slowing to prepare a right turn. I'm approaching a stretch where the Waltham High School and a middle school are on the right. A jeep passes bedecked with flags. Happy July 4th! There is a raised median here, and the street is widened so that there is a left turn lane in the other direction, in addition to the through lanes. The climb has become a bit steeper here. Maybe you can hear me breathing. Where there's a median, motorists may legally pass on the right. No one on the other side will make a left turn and be surprised by a vehicle passing on the right, as the black car approaching from behind appears to be doing. When two cars are side by side, it is especially important to force a full lane change. With narrow lanes and no shoulder, there would not be room for the car on the right to pass me safely if all three of us were stacked up side by side. I pointed my finger. Go over there. The driver could see me jabbing to the left with a pointed index finger. Ten miles an hour. Steady climb. Massachusetts traffic law. If it is not possible to overtake a bicycle or other vehicle at a safe distance in the same lane, the overtaking vehicle shall use all or part of the adjacent lane. 
In case you didn't get what the woman yelled, it was, move over. But again, the lane is not wide enough to share safely. My defense, entirely legal against her making an unsafe close pass, is to control the lane. And most drivers, like the one in this white van, are happy enough to use the next lane. There it is. Or I could ride the sidewalk with the pedestrians and their dog and the lamp posts and the utility pole. Here the lane carries right turning traffic as well as through traffic. I continue to control the lane so that a driver approaching from behind would not turn right from my left side. That would also be a problem if I were on the sidewalk. I can't be sure that the car coming up from behind me is going to go straight. Drivers do not always use their blinkers. This driver moves out to pass me without making any fuss at all. I'm now passing the first of two shopping centers along Lexington Street. On days when there is shopping, there is a lot of turning traffic here. Traffic can become congested then. Today, on July 4th, it certainly isn't. The few drivers turning left don't have to wait or may have only a short delay. This is good. Big truck back. I glance into my rear view mirror once every several seconds to check on what's going on back there. That's good. The great majority of drivers pass me with no fuss at all, just as they would any slow vehicle. Yes. Big truck turn. Again, I position myself to discourage motorists from turning right from my left side as I approach the traffic light at the entrance to the Northgate Gardens condominiums. And if a driver did cut a right turn around me anyway, I'd be far enough from the curb to make a quick turn to the right myself and avoid a collision. She said, wake up. It seems that she thinks I need to become enlightened to her view of how to ride a bicycle safely. I'd say that was motherly advice if misguided, except he gave me the finger. So far, I've been passed 27 times. All of the drivers gave me safe clearance. That would not have happened if I had been riding at the right side of the lane. I was harassed twice so far. Time to wrap myself in the flag again. The U.S. Constitution guarantees freedom of association, implying freedom of travel. The traffic law makes it clear that I may enjoy that right and exercise that freedom on my bicycle. A small minority of drivers on this July 4th is defying our system of law. For all that is said about Massachusetts drivers, most of them, like this one, get along with me just fine. Education, law enforcement, and in the long run, robotic cars can address the problem with bad actors. The right turn occurs before the intersection here at Trapello Road, and so it's as important as ever to control the lane. After the intersection, there are businesses with driveways on the right, there are drain grates, there's broken pavement, there's a lengthwise crack, and the lane is still narrow. Lexington Street is not good for pedestrians. There are few crosswalks. But by being proactive, I have made it work for me on my bicycle, despite the fast motor traffic. Up ahead, things change. Okay. Now, as I pass from Waltham into Lexington, the road goes from four narrow lanes to two lanes with shoulders. The width remains the same but there won't be even a few motorists who have the idea that I don't belong. I extend my appreciation to the ones who understood that I do. It's the American way.